hello friends today we are going to start with pharmacodynamics so in this first we will focus on the receptors okay so what are receptors receptors are macromolecules present on either on cell surface or maybe inside the cell okay which bring signal transduction changes of the administered drug so this is the basic definition of the receptor and drug acts on its receptors now receptors are mostly proteinaceous in nature and some historical points langley given the term receptive substances that is there the substance which act on a single thing okay and he first uh, observed the first compound was pilocarpine okay and its enemy was atropine which is antagonizing its function now the next is paul ehrlich who has given the term that is magic bullet receptor theory he has given the theory that is magic bullet receptor theory okay he observed that syphilis bacteria responded to arsenic compounds okay arsenic compounds can kill those syphilis bacteria so he called this arsenic compound as magic bullet magic bullet means it is targeting a particular substance that is the receptors okay first antibacterial substance discovered was arsifen arsfenamine or it is also known as salvarsan okay it was the name given to the this arsenic compounds this arsenic drug was named as arsfenamine or salvarsan okay now we will classify receptors so receptors classification is given by your iuphar okay so there are basically six classes of receptor the first one is g protein coupled receptor the second one is ion channels ion channels are again categorized into different types there may be voltage gated ion channels ligand gated store operated cation channel transient receptor potential vanilloid that is trpb leak sensitive stretch sensitive temperature sensitive or ion channels which is activated by secondary messenger or g protein related ion channels okay we will discuss in detail later on then the third category the third classification is your transmembrane enzyme linked receptor and the fourth is your transmembrane receptor not linked with enzyme okay so this is your transmembrane enzyme linked receptor this is transmembrane receptor but does not link with enzyme the fifth is your nuclear receptor and the sixth one is your intracellular enzyme so these are the basic six classification of receptor gpcr and channels transmembrane in receptor which is linked with enzyme transmembrane receptor which is not linked with enzyme nuclear receptors and intracellular enzymes now the first receptor which was discovered was nicotinic receptor that is nm type okay then one important point here mentioned that drug also acts on certain enzymes and transporters okay but they are usually not categorized under receptors now moving to the next we will see the difference between two types of receptor that is one is known as physiological receptor and the another one is known as orphan receptor so for physiological receptor we know the ligand binding to that receptor so some receptors have endogenous ligands those receptors are known as physiological receptors we know which endogenous ligand is binding to that receptor but there are some receptor uh, about which we are not knowing till today that is that what is the ligand okay so some receptors do not have any endogenous ligand these are known as orphan receptors one is your benzodiazepine okay so we are not knowing the particular ligand which is binding to the those receptors now some terms such as agonist inverse agonist antagonist and partial agonist so agonist means the the drug which will bind to the receptor okay and convert that receptor from inactive state to active state okay it will convert receptor from inactive state to active state means drug will bind to that receptor and also convert it from inactive to active that is known as agonist for the cholinergic receptor ach is agonist the next one is inverse agonist it will make receptor active but bring opposite effect clear the next one is antagonist antagonist only binds to receptor does not stimulate inverse agonist make receptor active but bring opposite effect antagonist does not bring opposite effect and does not causes the normal effects okay it only prevents the action of agonist clear the next one is partial agonist partial agonist it bring the effect of agonist but to a lesser extent than agonist clear now there are two terms more affinity and intrinsic activity so affinity is the ability by which compounds bind to its receptor and intrinsic activity is whether that compound which is bound to receptor can produce a response or not that is intrinsic activity clear so for agonist the intrinsic activity is 1 for partial agonist intrinsic activity is 0 to 1 okay inverse agonist minus 1 and antagonist 0 because antagonist is not producing any type of response now there is one model which is known as two receptor two state receptor model that is once once receptor is in active state and after binding with any agonist or partial agonist or antagonist 
sorry antagonist inverse agonist it will convert to its inactive state okay so from inactive to active state sorry the conversion of receptor from inactive to an active state by binding any type of ligand to that is known as two state receptor model now types of receptor in which first we will focus on gpcr okay so gpcr it is receptor dependent on g protein g protein what is g protein so g protein are gdp or gtp dependent proteins okay g protein means they are the proteins which is dependent on gdp or gtp and the gene which is coding for g protein is the third largest gene in your body so this is one of the most important point that is the gene which is coding for g protein is the third largest gene now some points associated with gpcr the two scientists gilman and goodwill has given nobel prize okay in context with gpcr they are seven transmembrane helical domain they have seven transmembrane helical domain n terminal which present on outer side okay which will bind to ligand and c terminal will present inside clear so there are seven transmembrane helical domain having n terminal on outer side and c terminal on inner side and on in inner side it has alpha and beta gamma subunit okay they are forming dimer and it is individual so and alpha unit alpha subunit has also gdp attached to it okay gdp and gdp according to its inactivated state or active state gdp or, or gdp will attach to alpha now okay, six components of the gpcr signaling so the first messenger is your ligand or hormone which was binding to the receptor the second the first messenger then receptor receptor is your g protein coupled receptor the third one is transducer the transducer is g protein clearly the first effector is your adenylate cyclase because adenylate cyclase was activated second messenger is cmp okay and the second effector is your protein kinase a because cmp is activating protein kinase a so this is the six component of the gpcr signaling now classification of gpcr so gpcr is classified on the basis of alpha subunit okay maybe gs gi gq g1213 g11 g16 okay g olfactory the three most important classification is gs gi and gq we will we have discussed gs and now we are going to discuss gq so ligand will bind to gpcr this will lead to activation dissociation of alpha from beta and gamma okay and this will lead to activation of phospholipase c beta and this enzyme phospholipase c beta will convert pip2 into ip3 and dag this ip3 binds to receptor on scr smooth endoplasmic reticulum and leads to opening of ligand gated calcium channel which will lead to efflux of calcium and calcium now bonds with calmodulin okay calcium calmodulin complex will form and this will calcium calmodulin complex generally activate myosin light chain kinase which will lead to muscle contraction and this dag stays in the membrane and activates protein kinase c now regulators of g protein signaling so alpha unit is the regulatory unit okay because it has intrinsic gdpage activity clear now role of beta gamma subunit this was all about alpha subunit now we will discuss role of beta gamma subunit so beta gamma subunit binds with alpha subunit okay and localizes the receptor to membrane okay help the gpcr to be binding with your membrane so it helps in localization of the receptor next it open k plus channel and inhibit calcium channel okay so we have this this is example of g protein regulated ion channels okay the next one is beta gamma subunit also activate pi3 kinase which convert pip2 pip2 into pip3 clear now we will go for receptor down regulation or desensitization or adaptation or tolerance or telephylaxis now so initially response was coming by a drug now response has faded that is known as down regulation or desensitization example morphine okay salbutamol beta salbutamol or nitrates these are the exam these are the examples of drug in which desensitization has been seen clear now we will go for mechanism of down regulation or desensitization or adaptation what are the possible mechanism behind this so there may be changes at the level of receptors there may be increased metabolism of the drug okay if increased metabolism of the drug then we have to increase the dose of the drug okay the next one is increase phosphodiesterase enzyme phosphodiesterase will convert reconvert cyclic amp into atp okay then compensatory mechanism will can operate in case of diuretics if we are giving diuretics okay then reflexly your ras system will be activated okay and it can affect your the the drug effects of drug that is diuretics drug okay now we will discuss uh, this point that is changes at the level of receptor so following changes will occur at the level of receptor the, the first one is that receptor is converted into inactive phosphorylated form by the bark okay 
by the bark which is assisted by protein that is known as arestin okay bark food form is beta adrenergic receptor kinase okay g protein related kinase which will phosphorylate receptors and receptors will be inactivated the second one is your internalization of receptor by clathrins another one is in uncoupling from g proteins okay receptor will be uncoupled from g proteins or decrease in number of receptor or increase destruction of receptors clear yeah? so this one two and three that is phosphorylation of receptor internalization and uncoupling is responsible for acute tolerance and the fourth and fifth is for chronic tolerance okay so this is all about the first part of pharmacodynamics